South American. You know, because <laughs> Pete had a, a piece of Pete on top of his work. Green stuff. Yeah. You yeah. had yeah. a name for it. Yeah, I remember. I'll, I'll get back to you. Okay. For all your brethren here, for by no word or deed have you marred or dimmed as yet the character that is now yours. We would it might be ever thus. Thrice have you by most solemn vows bound yourselves to be forever true. Thrice have you expressed a desire for Masonic light, and you have beheld the great lights of Freemasonry. But this book is the greatest light, for the others are but symbols of what this holy book doth contain. Every Master Mason is a builder, not only for this life, but for all eternity. He who would build must have a plan. On this Bible, the trestle board of life, is drawn the plan of all the ages, a most beautiful design, conceived by a master mind and wrought with utmost care. May you build and rear the temple of your life according to this plan, so that it, like the temple of old, may appear the work of the almighty hand of the supreme architect of the universe. I now present you with the great light of masonry, the Holy Bible. However men may differ in creed or theology, all good men are agreed that within the covers of the Holy Bible are found those principles of morality which lay the foundation upon which to build a righteous life. Freemasonry therefore opens this book upon its altars with the command to each of its votaries that he diligently study therein to learn the way to everlasting life. Adopting no particular creed, forbidding sectarian discussions within her lodge rooms, encouraging each to remain steadfast to his faith, Freemasonry takes all good men by the hand and leading them to its altars, points to the Holy Bible, opened thereon, and urges upon each that he faithfully direct his steps through life by the light he there shall find, and as he there shall find it. If from our sacred altar the atheist, the infidel, the irreligious man, or the libertine should ever be able to wrest this book of sacred law and thus remove or even obscure the greatest light in masonry, that light which for centuries has been the rule and guide of Freemasonry, then could we no longer claim ourselves the high rank and title of free and accepted Masons. But so long as that light shall shine upon our altars, so long as it shall illumine the pathway of the craftsman by its golden rays of truth, so long and no longer shall Freemasonry live and shed its beneficent influence upon mankind. Guard then this book of sacred and immutable law as you would guard your very life. Defend it as you would defend the flag of your country. Live according to its divine teachings with the everlasting assurance of a blessed immortality. My brothers, I trust you will search between the covers of this book where you will find that light which will illuminate your pathway to that grand lodge above where the supreme architect of the universe presides. Congratulations. distinguished badge of a mason. Maybe that in the coming years upon your head will rest the royal wreath of victory. From your breast may hang jewels fit to grace the diadem of an eastern potentate. Nay, more than these, with light added to the common light, your ambitious feet may tread round after round of the ladder which leads to the fame of an our mystic circle. Even the purple of the fraternity may rest upon your honored shoulders, but never again for mortal hands. Never again, until your imprecise spirits shall have passed upward and inward through the pearly gates, shall any honor so distinguished, so emblematical, the beauty of all perfection be conferred upon you as this which I now bestow. It's yours, yours to wear throughout an honorable life, to enter your death to be deposited upon the coffin, which shall enclose your blackness remains, and with them laid beneath the flies of the valley. Let its pure and spotless surface be to you an ever-present reminder of the purity of life and rectitude of conduct, a never-ending argument for nobler deeds, for higher thoughts, for greater achievement. When at last your weary feet shall have come to the end of life's toilsome journey, and from your nerveless grasp shall drop forever the working tools of life, may it be a record of your life and action be as pure and spotless as this fair emblem which I have placed within your hands tonight. And when your trembling soul shall stand naked and alone before the great white throne, 
they are to receive judgment for the deeds done while here in the body. May it be your portion to hear from him who sits as the judge supreme, the welcome words. Well done, good and faithful servants. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Congratulations.